I started from zero because I mean, people back then thought I was crazy because I was 18 years old. I played for the national team. I played in Serie A. I played Champions League. They were like, are you even crazy? You want to like, you want to pursue a career in TV from nothing and you have no network in this business. Hello and welcome to the Ronnie Lever Show, where every week we bring you fascinating guests with inspiring stories of success and overcoming obstacles from the world of sports, business, and entertainment. To support this channel, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and hit the like button so that we can deliver you the best content possible. And now, thank you very much and enjoy the show. She is from Nuremberg, Germany. She is a former professional soccer player. She played in the Champions League and also for the German national youth teams. She speaks four languages and after a soccer career has launched her career in the media as a TV host and a journalist. I'm very happy to have her on the show today. Please welcome, here is Valentina Macheri. Woo! Thank you so much. Wow, what an introduction, actually. <laughs> it's like you? amazing. I feel good now. Wow, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, and when you listen to to your story, or when you think about, you're still very very young, and, and, and but what you've already accomplished, what comes to mind to you? Um, what I have already accomplished, well, actually, I think nothing, not for that what I want to accomplish. But um, you know, I have always been kind of different like not because i really forced it or i said to myself i want to be different but just because like i think um i didn't listen to to society i didn't listen to what maybe is the norm you know and i always did what i feel to what i want to what i feel like what is my passion and so i just followed my instincts i guess and um here i am right now it's very beautiful also to hear you say that you believe that you haven't achieved anything yet, because I, I also believe that that's the right mindset in order to grow, because the, yeah. the moment you get saturated, it's the moment you stop growing. So I'm wondering, what, what was your dream that you wanted to be when you were a kid? Was it to be a professional soccer player? Was it to be a journalist? Was it to be, I don't know, mm -hmm. something completely different? What was it? Well, when I started playing football, like in a club, then my dream developed very fast to be a professional football player. But before that, because my parents, when I started playing football, it was because of my cousin, you know, we lived like in the same house and my dad and his dad had restaurants, so they were never at home. And he always took me to the streets to play football with him, you know, because he hasn't any brother. So um, it was like... I was the victim, you know, and uh, he needed a goalkeeper. So he always took me in the goal, like to be a goalkeeper so that he can practice shooting, you know. And this is how everything started. But my parents, Italian roots, they didn't really want me to play football because at that time it was not that common for a girl to play football as it is today. And um, so at first my dream actually was to, to work in, yeah, something with animals or like being a doctor or being an advocate after i've seen this movie i don't know how it is in english it's called uh it was like i think with um queen ritherspoon where she wanted oh, to legally bond yeah exactly and after that movie i wanted to become an advocate you know so a lawyer and um yeah but when i started like playing football in a club then my dream developed very fast to become a professional football player and then things just grew very fast and um i did it you know okay i mean uh, well uh, between the dream and i did it is is probably quite still some 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 time between oh, yes. but that's quite fascinating because first of all you did not become a goalkeeper you became a midfielder which yeah. is uh, quite different. Thanks, um, God, because I think goalkeeper is not that fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. I was always a striker. And and also, um, in the U.S., for example, in the U.S., soccer actually developed more for, as a girl's sports, and, and then the boys caught on. But in Europe, it's it's quite the opposite. And then um, yeah. back when you started, probably like in the 90s, I guess, um, it was still quite a domain for, for men, and, and not a lot of women were really playing it. So when you started out playing and you said that your parents didn't want to do that and so on, was there also quite some, 
some prejudices or some other things that you were facing when you were saying, well, I'm playing soccer? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, my whole family was like, what is she doing? You know, she's a girl, like she looks cute. She's a cute child. So what the hell is she doing there on the pitch with like 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 guys, you know? So um, my mom back then, I had also because of football, a lot of male friends, you know? And when I celebrated my birthdays back then, like when I became eight or nine or 10 years old, I always invited only boys. And my mom forced me to invite also girlfriends, like, you know, but I have been always like that. I mean, I think it was because of football and um, it was just because I felt more, I don't, I really love doing girl things, but back then I think it's because of my cousin, because he treated me like a brother, you know? So he kind of raised me like a boy and I, me and Tim, we just had a lot of time together. So I think it was because of him that I like felt more, more attracted by boys and boys friends than like of female things like playing with Barbies or something. I never did that, like, you know, and um, yeah, that's, I think just one of the main reasons that I, I really did what I what I've done till now like you know because of the mindsets because uh, like the way I grew up because of who I have been and how I have developed so yeah it was always kind of why are you only with boys why are you playing football why are you doing that why are you doing that this is not common that is not the norm that is not but as I said I always have just done what I felt was right for me and what I felt passionate about and what I had fun with, you know, so um, I just followed that way and, and it was right for me, I guess. You were touching the point of the mindset. Was it something that you just developed along the line or, or did you read some books? Did you go to seminars? Did you have some coaching or, or did you work with, with uh, other people or how did you develop that? Um, well, first of all, it was because I had no other option as you already told my story and as working as a woman in a male dominated industry right now and always being part of a male dominated industry as a football player back then um you have to have the right mindset because otherwise you would not survive like you know because people were always going to judge people are always questioning you like um men are different than women and of course you have to prove yourself way more than maybe a boy has to or a woman has uh, a man has to so um, first of all, I think I just had no other option than to develop a good mindset. Second, I trained it, of course. Um, I trained it by practicing, by reading books also, by talking to a lot of people with the right mindset or talking to a lot of people that are where I want to go or where I want to, like, what I want to reach, you know, what they have already, already achieved. And um, so it was just, I think, a progress. A progress um and of course as i told you sometimes when you have no other option you just you just swim like you know if someone throws you in the sea you just need to swim you have to learn how to swim so um basically i think that was the best thing actually that could happen to me even though it was very difficult sometimes but hard times make you stronger like you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger <laughs> Exactly. There is also this saying that um, hard times create, um, or no, tough times create good people, and, or hard times create good people, and good people create good times, and, and good times create weak people, and weak pay, people create hard times, and then hard times again create extraordinary people. So um, you were mentioning some books. Any recommendations on, on any books that you could recommend to somebody who wants to grow their mindset that really helped you along the way? Oh, wow. I have... I have read a lot, really. I love reading. I've always loved reading, actually, even when I was a kid. Um, I think one of the main good books I have read was from um, the Robinson Power Principle. Like, then the... Tony uh, Robbins? Uh, the, you mean Tony yeah. Robbins? It's in English, I think it's uh, Awaken the Giant Within. Yeah, could be. Sorry, mm -hmm. was the German also title. For me was, that, that was also for me one of the main yeah, ones in true then agreements of life then um big five for life um what i have read then ego is the enemy um 
all these kind of books, the reasons start with why. Um, well, I have here in my bookstore actually. <laughs> That's beautiful. Like uh, yeah, with why um, Simon Sinek, then the big big five for life from John. Big five Stilecki. for life is amazing. I loved it. Like then, I think every book of John Strelacki is amazing. Oh yeah, and also um, there was um, Holiday. What what's his name? Uh, the the um, ego is the enemy. Isn't that from what's his, um, Ryan Holiday? I think is the name. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Holiday. True. Yeah. Wow, very All these kinds of books. Like I I don't read a lot of novels or like books of this kind, but I read a lot of like mindset books and biographies and stuff like that. So you said that that was kind of a must for you because you needed to grow and you need to grow your personality. And you also said that when you were playing or when you started out playing, you were playing with all the boys. So um, that also kind of implies that back then there was not a women's path from the beginning. So it was like you were playing with, with guys at what age did you become, uh, was it then separated between boys and girls? And also, um, what is it? Did it change? Is it different today? Is there now like already from the beginning or how, how does it work? Well, I think you have to distinguish between playing in the streets and playing in a club because playing in the streets, it was very mixed. It was like boys from five years old to 15 years old. Like there was a mix, like, you know, and those who were the best were just playing and the other ones had to wait outside, like, you know, so uh, you had to prove yourself if you wanted to play. And then in the club, it was a bit different because, as I told you, my parents uh, didn't allow me to play. And the only reason why I was then allowed to play is that I joined a women's club, like a women's team. So I was actually playing with a girls team, but I trained because I was in a like sportive school, like a school of sports. I don't know how to say this in English, but the school was very specialized um, on sports, like for athletes. And... Um, There I trained with the boys and then I played at the weekend my games with my uh, girls team. So mm -hmm. I think this is really what I took advantage from because like boys were a lot of faster. Uh, they had more technical skills. They were like more physic, you know, so um, this really helped me, of course. And I think the difference from back then to now then is that women's teams are more integrated in the whole club like you know in the whole society because back then it was not common and it was not usual that like FC Bayern Munich or big clubs had a women's team but today it is like kind of mandatory you know and um, it got a lot of more attraction it is a lot more popular and of course there is a lot more money even though you can't compare it to the men's football of course but Back then, there was even less money in this business, like, you know, in the sports. So I think this is one of the main differences from then to today. That's quite a fascinating. You touched a few a few topics here. On the one hand, you were practicing harder than you were actually playing the games when you were playing with the boys who were physically more advanced. And that reminds me when, when I was in the U.S. in high school and, and there was baseball practice. And when before the guys went out to hit uh, with, with the baseball bat, They, they had weights on the bat so that mm -hmm. when they were and, and when they were throw, uh, like um, yeah. going through with the practicing with the bat, taking some practice swings, it was harder than then actually when they stepped on the plate, when they stepped on the base to actually hit it. And then it was kind of like that release because you already practiced harder than you actually played. What was the moment? that when because you, you said you started out as a goalkeeper and and i don't know how exciting that was for you or how how much you thought at the time that it was yeah, this is how, yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> what was the moment that yeah. actually triggered the spark that lit the spark where you afterwards said that's something that i love mm, well i loved it anyways because as i told you i and this is something that is still inside of me I try to only do what I love to do. Like, I don't let myself force in something that I don't like or say something that I don't think or like do something that I really don't am convinced about, like, you know? So um, I just loved it because I think I was with my cousin and I really loved my cousin because he was kind of a brother for me and um, everything he did because he was kind of an idol for me. Everything he did, I was fascinated about, you know? So everything he did for me was like, wow, I want to do the same. 
And um, that's how I just developed my passion for football and my love for football. And then I was just enjoying it, of course. And my cousin back then was really good. So he played for a professional team as well. And I, as I told you, wanted just to follow his path. Like, you know, I wanted to do everything that he did. And um, that's how my love and my passion for football just grew. Very beautiful. You also mentioned before that um, that the income is quite different between the men yeah. and the women in, in soccer. Um, how do you see that? Well, um, I mean, we have already come a long way in, when it comes to the subject, but I think you will never, ever reach the same salaries that men are earning because it's a business, you know, and you can't compare women's football to men's football when it comes to how much money is in this business. And of course, you can only pay salary salaries based on the money that is coming in in a business like, you know, that's just industry. And um, in women's football, it's not the same money. It's like maybe, I don't know the exact numbers, but let it be three or four percent of what money is in the football industry of men's football, you know. But what would be beautiful um, actually would be if every woman that is playing professionally football in the first division, is it in Germany, England, Spain, Italy or whatever, um, could just focus on her sport, like, you know, because... Here in Germany, for instance, um, besides the first two or three teams, like Bayern Munich, Wolfsburg, and maybe one or two others, uh, everyone has a normal job. Like they work 40 hours a week or 25 or 30 hours a week and still do their professional sport, you know? And I mean, what you have to, to, to put on the pitch and what you have to do every single day in sports is just what you have to add on your normal job and your normal life, you know? And this is really a lot. Wow. And so I think that would be amazing if just every woman that is practicing or playing football could do this on a professional way, maybe based on sponsors or based on, I don't know, some programs or whatever, because I think that would be really amazing. That sounds like a man's football or soccer um, like 100 years ago. That's it's really like when, when the first professional leagues came into and then they were still having some side jobs and so on. And, and wow. But and I, I have to agree with you that that really women's soccer has come a long way in terms yeah. of the first World Cup for women was in 1991. For the men, it was in 1930. And, and also the quality has, has risen incredibly when you yeah. when you watch it. When you um, because we you said before like okay i i wanted to do it I, i went to a club and then suddenly i was i was there but mm -hmm. were there also some roadblocks along the way were there also some challenges as it is for for many people or did it just go like this it just how went like this. Yeah. of course not <laughs> of course not. Deal with the challenges? I, i wish it just went like this like you know every time in life i want to have something or i want to achieve something i do like this and i have it it would be amazing actually but of course not um It was a long way, as I told you. I mean, I'm Italian. Uh, I'm a girl. Uh, I didn't really fit into any kind of uh, society formed shimata, you know. So actually, I was just different. And by being different, you always have to face maybe more challenges than by being kind of the norm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that was just normal for me like challenges were just normal and of course um losing of course also was kind of normal even though i didn't really like it um but as an athlete you learn that it is normal sometimes to fail and it is more important that you stand up if you fall down like you know um it's just i think Michael Jordan was the one that said, I have achieved so much in my life because I have failed so many times. And actually, this is something that you learn as an athlete. This is mindset also. And this is something that helped me along the way because I have failed really so many times. And I was like frustrated so many times. And I was like desperate so many times about what is going on in this world where I'm living and where I'm working. Um, that really I had... A bunch of reasons to give up like so many times you know but i never did 
and I still don't, and it's still difficult, but um, I just go further and further step by step, you know, by having the right mindset. And of course, by just being a good person and by being very ambitious and by just following my my goals and, and what I am. And I think this is what has made me come so far till now, you know. Can you think of a time when you really wanted to give up and to throw it all away and then what made you persevere? What made you go through? Well, yeah, I remember, for instance, one time when there was um, the Youth World Cup in the under 17. And um, I have been always part of the youth national team. Like, I never missed a game. And then we got a new coach. And uh, I played on a position like offensive midfield where we had a lot of good players, you know. And sometimes it's also when the coach changes, maybe he has a different kind of, of football. He has a different system and stuff. And he just he decided not to put me, but to took someone else um, in in the team, and so I missed this World Cup, which has been like I think in Trinidad and Tobago or something like really cool, and this was very tough. Or for instance, one time we had a training camp in Miami, and we met in Frankfurt, and um, we had one or two trainings there, and then I got sick. And it has been like, it would have been my first time in the States, you know, I was 15 or 16 years old. And um, my coach decided not to, to, to take me because I was too sick. I had like fiber and everything. And um, he said I had to call my parents to come pick me up because I'm too sick. He can't like, you know, um, taking the responsibility to, to bring me in the States in this uh, status of like illness. And so... Yeah, I think um, these are just so some 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 points I remember that were like really disappointing and really hard in in football in my football career. And, and because and that's something very powerful right now what you're telling because I believe that everybody in life has a goal that they're pursuing and sometimes you reach it and other times and oftentimes there's something coming in the way or life happens. Yeah, life so, happens really sometimes. Life just yeah, happens. and and especially when you're as an athlete, really focused on the goal, you're working towards it. You're you're really working your butt off, so to say, in a way to to really make it. And then, like you have the goal, Trinidad and Tobago World Cup. It's all like you already know this some years ahead of time, and yeah. everything is laid out for that. And then it doesn't happen for you. You cannot go, and other people go. In that moment, you already told us, I mean, the feeling must have been really bad at the same time. How did you overcome it? And how did you afterwards, did that fuel your fire? Did you take something out of that? Something Could you turn the negative into a positive or how was that? Well, um, yeah, for sure. And of course, I mean, what other choice do you have? I mean, if a coach decides not to bring you, if you say from yourself, I have put everything I, I had on the pitch, and his decision was still the decision it was, I can't influence it. Like, you know, it. I have to accept it. I have no other choice. And what you want to do then? You you say you just stop your whole career, so you throw everything away just because of one decision someone made? Like, you know, this would be very stupid. So also here, you have no other choice. And I mean... For me, it always was when someone did me wrong, like in personal life or in, in professional life, I always wanted to prove them wrong. So it even motivated me more. And um, yeah, that's why you just go on. You have to, like party must go on, you know, even though life sometimes happens. I mean, what the f*** you want to do is, is life. Life is unpredictable sometimes. What I have already experienced sometimes, I was like, how is this even possible it's like crazy but you know you have to deal with it it's life it is and and it, you were mentioning michael jordan before it also reminds me of of that story when michael jordan was in his junior year in year in high school and he, no his sophomore year i believe and he did not make the the varsity high school basketball team and he was so frustrated and he was so like he went home, he was crying the whole day and then or the whole I week. was crying too, by the way, back then. I, I was crying a lot of times. I cry always. I always cry. I don't know. I cry easily. It's like because maybe my emotions, I'm Italian. I don't know. 
but I cry so many times. Like sometimes my mom think I'm crazy because I always cry, but it's like emotions, you know, it's good. Emotions turning out, it's like it is. And you, I, I think it's also important to like let emotions flow, you know, because they're inside you. And I think this is also a way to, to deal with some things. And I mean, remember back then, I don't think he has cried, but Tom Brady, for instance, because you mentioned Michael Jordan, Tom Brady back then was drafted as quarterback number four. And back then in the depth he, chart of New England. Yes. Yeah. 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 And usually you just draft three quarterbacks and he was quarterback number four. So it was like no chance at all that this guy has a good career ahead, you know, and now he's the God of, of American football and he played, he won, I don't know how many Super Bowls he won, how many seven. rings, five or seven, yeah. So sometimes it's just a matter of time, mindset, and of course a bit of talent because I think if you have zero talent, it could become also difficult. But if you have talent and you don't put in the work, you won't achieve anything, you know. Yeah, of course, that, that you always got to work for it. And, and Michael then also turned it all around, like he turned his frustration and his anger into drive into into fire and to to fuel his his career and i think with tom brady it's been very similar in terms of to really when when people doubted him that always just fueled him up even more and, and that's that's what all the greats have, have done in their careers so for somebody just starting out or for somebody who who says because many kids have, have the dream of becoming a professional soccer player i had that um mm -hmm. and and i know that or professional athlete what advice would you give to somebody that um, is growing up and says, I want to do it. I want to like, what's important and what advice do you want to give to that person? Well, this is uh, deep. Um, well, of course you have to put in the work. And of course I'd say always follow your heart because if I would have listened to the people around me, my parents or maybe some coaches or friends or whoever, um, maybe I, or probably sure, I wouldn't be where I am today. So if you just feel right about a thing, because you really feel it, because I think sometimes there are passions or things in life that really feel right to your nervous system, like to yourself. And if you feel it's right and you're passionate about it and you really want something, just work for it. Work for it. Don't stop. Don't let anybody stop you along your way and just work on it. Be consistent because sometimes there will be challenges. Sometimes there will be, maybe sometimes also you have to go a step back to go too further, like, you know, so I would say it's really about do what you love, put in the work and be consistent about it. And don't listen to others. Even, well, stop. Listen to others if it's constructive critics. Sometimes you have to listen, of course. But don't listen to people that are not where you want to go and try to give you advices. As Arnold Schwarzenegger always puts it, don't listen to the naysayers. Yeah. The people always say, no, 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 it's not possible, and so on. Like the only the only person who can decide if something is possible or not is you. True. And sometimes also some other people, but yeah, well, but I mean, but still at the end of the day, it's it's you who, who has to make it happen or not. Yeah. So when you talking about making it happen, when you look back at your soccer career, what were the highlights for you? We already mentioned you played um in the in the um youth teams of Germany, also you played Champions League as a player. Like what was what were some magic moments or what was for you your, your highlight of your career? Well actually it was the magic moment my first Champions League appearance when the Champions League anthem um was starting in the stadium and we played in the main stadium in Verona back then. This was kind of magic really like this anthem that you just were listening like on TV when you were watching Champions League of men's football, you know, and then suddenly you just stand there and you listen to this anthem in the stadium yourself. It's crazy. It was amazing. And you know it's for you. Yeah, that was, well, not only for me, for the others too on the pitch, well, but of, of course, course but yes. For you too. <laughs> yeah, it was, this was very special. Very, very ah, special. I, I can imagine. And that was... Um, Ooh, it give, that gives me goosebumps because I would have loved to have that. Um, so 
at the end of your soccer career, um, when did you know that this is the end of your soccer career? Did you know because normally when you when you choose a career, there are people who choose a career and then after school, for example, and they they take it until they retire. As a soccer player or as a professional athlete, you know that you're you're not gonna. I mean, you're gonna retire at some point where other people just start to work, basically. So, yeah. um, when did you know that this is gonna be the end? Mm. And did, you, did you already have a plan? I had no plan um, because when I played in Verona, I just finished school in in Germany. You know, so uh, I just took myself one year out of everything just to focus on my football career and to play football. And I was back then 20 years old, so very young, or nine, eight, no, sorry, I was 18 years old, actually, not 20. I was 18 years old, and I had players in my team at the age of 30, 35 that has played, had played World Cups, European Championships, hundreds of games of Champions League. They have won titles. They have been part of the national team for years. They have won individual trophies, and their contract wasn't extended because they were at the age where you don't extend contracts anymore at 35 years old, you know, and um, they hadn't had the time or the energy to focus on a second career. So they were ahead of like nothing, you know, and this was kind of a turning point for me because I was like, do I want to have the same do i want to really be 30 35 where your life should be like a highlight or the highest point and then standing in front of a big wall with a big question mark you know and so i started to think about hmm, is this what i want to do and it was also back then kind of an instinct or a feeling where i said to myself I don't see myself there in 10 years or in 15 years because I was 18 years old. I see myself more, I see myself in, in sports industry, but I see myself more in kind of a businesswoman. Like, you know, I think this was a turning point where I saw myself, I was more than just an athlete. And um, I said to myself back then when I was watching football games and there were female reporters on the pitch, for instance, that they were, asking good questions, but I always felt like they just learned these questions. They don't really have a feeling for some situations or like some um, mindset status or for the emotions that some players have maybe after a loss or after a, a win or whatever, after an injury. And so I said to myself, how cool would there be if there was a woman? Because back then it was not that common today. I mean, there are a couple, I would say, a few um, former professional football players, females also in, in TV. And I said to myself, how cool would that be if there was a woman that really knows what she's talking about? And so I said to myself, I want to become that woman, you know. And this is when I then, the season afterwards, I stopped my football career to start studying journalism and to have a new goal, actually. Like, I started from zero. Because, I mean, people back then thought I was crazy because I was 18 years old. I played for the national team. I played in Serie A. I played Champions League. They were like, are you even crazy? You want to, like, you want to pursue a career in TV from nothing and you have no network in this business because my parents have a restaurant. So I'm not, like, daughter of some moderator or reporter or journalist or whatever. And back then people thought I'm crazy <laughs> because I called like my agent and I said listen um I'm done <laughs> he was like what the f are you talking about I was like yeah I don't feel it anymore and it, it also was like instinct it was an instinct it was less I I just followed my heart you know I did what felt right for me in that moment wow um that's quite amazing and and listening to you that's quite something and and, and when I'm what I was just thinking now, getting into the first of all, it was not an option for you to say, okay, I'm going to play a little bit longer and I'm actually going to just do this afterwards and, and just going to focus on, on football for now. Um, and on the other hand, what were the other obstacles when you or the biggest challenges when you went when you changed your career? Well, a lot. I, as I told you, I started from 
zero or minus 100. Like I didn't know anything in my family. Nobody studied. So no one had ever go, go to university. Um, I had to look for a university. University was expensive. Uh, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know exactly how you actually become a TV reporter, you know, because this is not like a normal office job where you can just send your CV and then get the job. It's something like, it's not, it's not really, you cannot grab it, you know, it's like unknown. It's difficult to explain, but it's not just a normal job. There are different ways how you can become a TV host or a reporter or whatever. And um, so I really have to had to start at zero. So um, lots of ops. I think only obstacles. Like there was not one point I'd say that could be easy. Wow. Well, it's uh, and, and uh, once again about the question that you it was not an option for you to say I'm going to play a little bit longer in my football career. No, because I I'm like this. I'm when I feel something is wrong or not right anymore. I tried to change the situation. Um, I was like, I just had that dream then. I, I didn't felt like I want to be a professional athlete anymore. I want to become a sports journalist. And to combine both, maybe it could have been possible. Like I could have maybe started university in Italy and continue playing maybe who knows? I'd be a TV reporter in Italy now. I don't know, but I just did what felt right for me. And as I told you, university was expensive, so I couldn't afford like a uh, apartment, a house, and life uh, abroad without any help of my parents or whatever. So I had to go back home at my parents' home. Um, I started working um, at my dad's restaurant or my uncle's restaurant to earn the money I had. I needed to pay university, you know. So, Would you have had the time to to study next to playing soccer on a professional level? I think you you can you can. Um, it's difficult because back then where I played, we had a game every two or three days, and when you play internationally, you will also miss a lot of lessons because you're uh, in different countries, and um, when there are lessons, maybe you have training. So it is difficult, but I think it's possible because a lot of girls do it. But of course, you're missing a lot of lessons. So when you went into into media, and I believe also this is is a profession that many people love to do, like many sports fans. If you cannot be an athlete, then be around the athletes in a way, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So in, in a sports journalism kind of way, what were the things that you needed to learn the most? Because obviously you knew about sports. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I needed to learn that sometimes it's not only about performance. Um, that was different when I was an athlete, because when you're an athlete, you're on the pitch and everyone's watching your performance. And when you play bad, maybe you get another chance, maybe you get other two chances. But if you don't show the performance afterwards, you're going to be on the bench for the next games. And this is kind of different in... Um, in working life, I think that sometimes you have to accept the fact that it's maybe not only about performance. Sometimes you can have the best performance and still not be chosen because of some other reasons. Um, then I had to accept the fact that um, there are a lot of people that um, don't want to see you succeed. Um, there are a lot of people standing in your way and try to break you down or try to stop you. And of course, I learned that it's just really about consistency. If you think you're good at something, if you really feel it's right, and if you put in the work, you have to be consistent. Like sometimes you have to run in 100 doors and everyone's saying no, but then the 101st door is going to be open for you. Like, you know, you really don't have to give up until you are where you want to be. So also a great lesson in life in terms of dealing with rejection or, or dealing with discouragement. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was rejected so many times, honestly. 
uh, I was like, you know, I felt like, okay, I have been a, fo a former professional football player. I'm a woman. I know about football. And of course, I'm speaking four languages. It's like Germany is waiting for me, but it was not. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, really. It's, it's yeah. the truth. I have been rejected so many times. I want to say, how the f can this be? Like, for me, it's like, I have been a professional football player. I am a woman. Everyone's looking for women. I uh, speak four languages. I know athletes. I have the network in football. Like, you know, I was like, how the f can I be rejected so many times? It's crazy. But it's, as I told you, sometimes it's not about performance. It's because the chief of XY prefers uh, her or prefers him or prefers maybe uh, a more experienced man or whatever, you know? It's just, I don't know. It was very difficult. And I was really rejected so many times. I, I wanted to, when I finished my university, um, I applied for a lot of volunteering uh, programs, a lot. And I've got only no's, really, at Sky, at uh, some radio stations, at other TV channels in Germany. I swear, it's not that I'm just uh, telling you here something because I want to say I have overcome so many obstacles. Really, a lot of people just rejected me, maybe because, as I told you, I'm not like the common TV reporter in Germany, blonde with blue eyes, German, you know, I'm a bit different. And that's what you have to deal with when you're different. Like, you know, you don't fit in every system the way others do. What was, what still kept your fire burning? Like what made you go on? Because when you're dealing with a lot of rejection, a lot of discouragement, and, and there are probably some points where you say, okay, I don't want this anymore. But then there is a voice or something inside of you telling you, no, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to make this happen. What was that for you? You know, uh, I, I never got a bad feedback on my performance. I always got a good feedback. And actually, this was the confirmation that I am on the right way. The decisions were made based on, I don't know, other reasons. Because every time I applied for something or I did a casting or whatever, I had an amazing feedback on my performance. But then I was like, okay, you're kidding me. So you're telling me I did like a top performance, but you're not choosing me. So who the f are you kidding? Like, you know, but it was really, it was like that. And I always felt like I am good at what I'm doing. And of course, uh, there was the confirmation that I'm not like um, over self-confident or something. Um, I had the confirmation that I was right you know, and I really felt like I was doing a good job always when, when I'm doing interviews or whatever. And this is just that voice inside of me. And of course, the confirmation of other people that told me it's right. And it's just a matter of time, maybe until I achieve what I want to achieve. And of course, I also believe in God. And I think really God will bring you where you belong at the right timing and even though sometimes i didn't understand some decisions after one or two or three years or maybe after a couple of months i was like now i understand why this didn't work out you know beautiful very beautiful so if somebody also wants to pursue a career on tv or a career as a, as a journalist what career advice could you give to that person? Mm, based on uh, skills or based on how to pursue this career? Um, both, like in terms of like, what should that person do? What should, how, how, how would you approach it? Well, I always felt like education, like a basis, a foundation is the most important thing because I have seen a lot of people maybe that uh, were going a lot fast, faster than me but also the fall down was a lot deeper than I could ever fall down, you know? So if you built a castle, you first need to set the foundation. Like, you know, you need a good fundament. And I think this is education and these are the technical skills, like in journalism, like um, a good way of talking, good questions, um, the way you talk to people, um, skills in journalism um and i have done everything like it's not i just you just put it me on in front of the camera and i became a tv host i have done everything i wrote articles um i 
cut it with cutting systems like videos or films. I record it. I have done everything. So I really am able to do everything that is in this circle, like from behind the camera to in front of the camera. And I think this is a very good advice and very important because if you have a good fundament, you can build up on this and you understand. You really have a good understanding of everything around you. Yeah, of course. I, I know uh, how it feels like being behind of the camera. So I know how I have to act in front of the camera so that we both are a good team, you know, because I understand what his job is about. And I think this is very important, like education, education and technical skills. And then, of course, your mindset. And mindset is something very, very, very important. And we already talked about that quite a bit. To wrap it up, because we're already in our last four to five minutes, some rapid fire question to you. Mm -hmm. Who is someone that you admire or look up to and why? Mm, in, in, in my professional life or in my private life? In, it could be any. Well, in my private life, of course, my mom, um, because like, you know, my mom lost her parents at a very young age and I think she really had a difficult life, but uh, she always did everything she could to make me everything possible. You know, she really did like, I don't know, thousands of kilometers to drive me to training, to drive me to the games when I was a football player. So um, I'm very thankful for that. And in professional life, I think there are a lot of people that um, have a, an amazing career. Like I really love Esther Settlercheck here in Germany. I really love Kate Abdo. Um, but I'm more focused on my personal way. So I could not say I want to be like her or her or like him or that person. I really want to that young girls maybe say I want to be like Valentina, you know. Exactly. And, and still, one point what you were saying out of that is don't be a copy of somebody else. Yeah. Write your own story. Like True. be yourself, basically. Then um, we already talked about some books. What's the best book that you've ever read and why? This is a difficult question. The best part. I'd say... Mm, conversations with God. Neil Donald Walsh. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Why? I'd, I'd say because this is a really difficult book to read, I feel like, and it's a little bit complicated, but it's just, I don't know, it's just like after that you, you see things differently. Mm. And what's one thing that you cannot live without? Uh, for sure my dog, <laughs> okay. my family, my phone. Wow, that's already three things, but okay, I'm gonna let you get through with that. So um, pasta. <laughs> even more, <laughs> if somebody wants to get in touch with you, if somebody says, wow, I'm really inspired, uh, where can people find you? I think um, on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram on, of course, TV, <laughs> sometimes Sky UK, sometimes Sky in Germany, sometimes Sport One in Germany, always at Bill TV and always at the zone during Champions League. Wow, that's that's quite a bit. Um, last questions. Um, what do you hope that the audience takes away from our conversation today? Mm, mm -hmm. I hope motivation and inspiration. I think um, sometimes, you know, when... I say to people, I want to be a diff a diff the difference, like the difference I want to see in the world, I try to be, and they like, okay, but you can't change everybody. And I say, no, I can't, of course, but if I just maybe can be a motivation to one or two or three, I've already made a difference. It's better than nothing. Very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show here today. Thank you very much. Big hand, Valentina Maceri. Thank you so much for having me. 
Thank you for sticking with us until the end. To make this content even more valuable for you, please leave a comment below and share your thoughts and also share this video with somebody you care about who absolutely needs to see this. Thank you very much. Have an outstanding day and see you next time.